Feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. Hello, Facebook family and friends. What a joy to be able to welcome you today to this wonderful broadcast. You know, it's always a joy to serve you the grace of God to teach you the word of God. Remember, this season we are on with Riot Live and the Counselor every day. Teaching and teaching, bringing clarity to God's word. You must remember that every time we study the word of God, the intent is to equip you so that you can also equip others. Brother Paul said to Timothy, the things that you have heard of me among many witnesses, the same, commit to faithful men who shall in turn commit to others. The word of God is going to come with so much power. Revelation knowledge is going to come, you know, to you through the teaching of God's word on this broadcast. And every day, the word comes twice on this platform. 12 noon GMT plus 1 and 10 p.m. GMT plus 1 every day right here on Facebook. Except when we go live each evening at 6 p.m. GMT plus 1. And I'm so excited because we're examining very critical subjects of the scripture, doctrinal exegesis, bringing clarity and equipping you in the knowledge of Christ. Just before we get in the service of today, I want to also mention, if you're in an area around the world where you're following these teachings and there is no Christ-centered church where you can attend church, two things are very important. Number one, God doesn't want you to be in isolation. The Bible says God sets the solitary in families. You need to belong to a local church, a local fellowship, where you're able to learn with other brethren, and beyond learning, where you're able to serve the brethren with the grace of God and the gift of God upon your life. You know, the word of God teaches us against selfishness. When you begin to stay by yourself, you're being selfish. You're denying other brethren the grace of God upon your life. So I want to encourage you to ensure that you are a part of a Christ-centered fellowship. And if there's none in your area, send me a mail today. Dr. Abel Damina, tell me where you are. If you want to host or you want to be the coordinator of the campus, we will train you, equip you, and help you start one in your country, in your community, so you become a lighthouse to the darkness in your community. Very, very important. I'm expecting to hear from you today. And if there is a Christ-centered church, it's good for you to belong there and make a difference. If there's none, we expect to hear from you. Remember also to order for our teaching materials, both the books and the audio teachings, so that you can equip yourself and establish yourself in the light of Christ Jesus. Fasting your seat bells right now as I take you into that service where the spirit of our God is already moving. Happy view. You are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your spirit and in your body, which are God. So your spirit and your body is sealed until the day when mortality puts on immortality. Sin cannot break the seal. Individual mistakes cannot break the seal. Persecution cannot break the seal. Nakedness cannot break the seal. Hunger cannot break the seal. Famine cannot break the seal. I am fully persuaded that nothing in this life, nor in the life to come, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ. Where are you in Christ? What keeps you there? The love of God. Join Drs. Abel and Rachel Daminer in New Christian Camp Meeting 2021 and Ask the Counselor with Michael Bush. Theme in Christ Realities. Ministering Dr. Abel Daminer. Date 31st January to 14th February 2021. Time Mondays to Saturdays 6 p.m. daily on Inspiration FM 105.9 Uyo, Comfort FM 95.1 Uyo, Excel FM 106.9 Uyo, Radio Aquaibo 90.5 Uyo, Unoyo FM 100.7 Uyo, and Heritage FM 
7.30 and also live on Sundays, 7.30 a.m. first service and 10.30 a.m. second service. Venue, Power City International, number 98 Wangibo Road, Oyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. You can also watch these programs live on Kingdom Live Network TV on your strong decoder or my TV decoder. You can also follow Abel Damino's Facebook page, Public Figure, as well as YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram handles to watch real time. Host, Drs. Abel and Rachel Damino. We're still on the Father and His family. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, He asked His disciples, saying, Who do men say? that I, the Son of Man, am. Next verse. And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah's, or one of the prophets. Next verse. I said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Next verse. Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. 17. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee. It is revelation. This did not come from the five physical senses. Has not revealed this to thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. It takes revelation to know what God has done. You can't rely on your senses to know what God is doing. Not by what I think, not by what I feel, not by what I perceive, but by what I know. What I know. Inside information. Revealed knowledge. Jesus said unto him, I also say unto you that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church. Look at the personal pronoun in that verse. I will build my. I my personal pronouns i my i will build my god never asked for an offering from abel god does not demand human sacrifice god does not use sacrifice god does not require any animal or human sacrifice he doesn't use it because god is not the kidnapper God is not the angry person that is looking for how to be appeased. But you see, humanity has a style of trying to take the place of what God will do. We want to do for God. We want to help God. We want to assist God. We want to work on behalf of God. It's called works. The mentality of works. And sometimes you just feel that this is your role. For example, people feel that it is their role to be holy. It is their role to be righteous. It is their role to be, you know, purified. They, they think I have to do it. So there's a works mentality and there's nothing any mortal man is capable of doing that qualifies for God's standard. Notice what he said. I will build my... I, my, personal pronouns. I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not refer to the resurrection from the dead. The gates of death shall not prevail against the church I will build. Meaning, death cannot stop the building of that church. Meaning, it is his work. It is his work. The building of the church is the work of God. He will build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Which refers to his resurrection from the dead. It's not a present tense occurrence. It's not about to happen. It's what God has already done in that he raised Jesus from the dead. It is his work. The gates of hell not prevailing against the church is not prayer. It's not our prayer point. Oh, Father, may the gates of hell. No, 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 no. It is what God has done. Jesus was just stating the obvious what God himself alone will do. That God will raise Jesus from the dead and death cannot keep him down. And that resurrection was the defeat of death and the defeat of hell. 
so that's what he was talking about he wasn't talking about a futuristic event he was talking about what has already happened so we can say the gates of hell did not prevail against the church hallelujah hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 look at the way the writer of hebrews puts it for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. Is it not very clear that there was somebody who had the power of death from Genesis until Jesus died? Somebody was holding the power of death and that person was using that death. It's not God that had the power of death, so it couldn't have been God killing. There's someone who had the power of death. Oh, Jesus said, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The Bible says in John 8, 44, he was a murderer from the beginning. I mean, the scriptures are very clear. At the mouth of two or three witnesses, a word is established. Him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Meaning, Satan cannot stop the resurrection. Look at verse 15 of Hebrews chapter 2. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Fear is a fertilizer for bondage. There can be no bondage until there is fear. He might destroy him that had. And I have news for you. He has destroyed him already. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 19. Now therefore. You are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. I will build my church. So if he is building his church, it means you will be his work. You will be his work. Ephesians 2.19 Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. You know, church, the truth of the matter is, we have not had the realities of who we are in Christ enough. We have not had enough of our realities in Christ yet. We've not had. Ephesians 2.18, pay attention. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners. Hallelujah. But fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Say with me very loud, I am a saint. Say it again, I am a saint. Now say with me, I am a citizen. Citizen in the Greek means where you were born from. Natural birth. You are not an official member of the house of God. You are a natural member of the house of God. You are a natural. You originated. That's where you were born from. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20. Now pay attention. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, 21, in whom all the building, did you observe the word built? If your Bible was mine, I will underline built. I will underline the building, fitly framed together, grow it unto an holy temple in the Lord. You are built. That word in the Greek is a finished task. A finished task. So that's why the next statement says, after he says you are built, he says you are now a building. You are already a building. We are built. So there is a building. There is a building. Look at verse 22 of the same Ephesians chapter 2. In whom you also are builded. That's another word to underline. Built, building, builded. Builded together for an habitation of God through the spirit notice all those things are in the past so there is a building already that building is a family 
The family is already in existence. We are built already. All those, you know, theology where people talk about going to heaven, there is a construction site, all that is rubbish. We are already a built house. We are already God's habitation. We are already God's dwelling place. We are already God's residence. It's already a done work and it is God's work and he did the work already. He, he built us. We are builded. We are a building of God hallelujah so jesus now when he was saying i will build my church i my i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it what he was referring is i will raise my family i will build my family the church of god is the family of jesus matthew chapter 16 verse 18 pay attention and i say also unto thee that thou art peter and upon this rock i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will, I will. You need to read the entire verses to understand clearly what we're dealing with here. Ephesians again chapter 2 verse 18. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the father. We both have access to the father through the spirit. No need for intermediary. We both have access to the Father, undeniable access because of the union that we have with the Father. The unlimited, unrestricted, unconditional union that we have with the Father. In John chapter 14, because the family is the Father's family. The family is the Father's family. So access is unconditional. Look at John 14, 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. He doeth the works. Look at verse 11. Believe me that I in the Father and the Father in me. Or else, believe me for the very work's sake. Verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater than this shall he do because I go unto my father so when he said i will build my church those are the words of the father because a son doesn't build a family jesus said i will build my church then he said the words i speak are the father's words the words i speak are the father's words those are the words of the father I will build my church because it's not just the church of Christ. It is the father's family. Notice again, John chapter 14, verse 11. Believe me that I in the father and the father in me or else believe me for the very work's sake. 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater than this shall he do because I go unto my father. Verse 13. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do that the father may be glorified in the son. So the father is glorified in the son. So question, who builds the family? The father. The father builds the family how in the son John 5:17 But Jesus answered them my father walketh hitherto and I walk my father walketh hitherto and I walk that and is the TKS rule of bible interpretation my father walketh that is I walk is the father that is walking and we see the walking of the father in the son never forget 
it is a father walking what we see in the son. In this family, the father and the son are not independent. They are not separated. The father walketh and I walk. Look at that John 5, 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The son can do nothing of himself, But what he seeth the father do. For what things soever he doeth, This also doeth the son likewise. This also doeth the son likewise. He uses the word egozomai in the Greek. Egozomai. He uses the same term. The father walketh, then I walk. In other words, my walk is from the father's walk. Look at verse 19 of John chapter 5. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The son can do nothing of himself. But what he seeth the father do, For what things soever he doeth, this also doeth the son likewise. See nothing. Underline those words. See and nothing. The son can do nothing. But what he sees the father do. See the father do. The son can do nothing. The son can do nothing. But what he sees, so the father's work is seen in the son. So whatever the son does is a response to what the father is doing. The family is birthed by the father. The word father in the Hebrew is the word Abba. In the Greek is the word Pata. Pata. Used for someone who births something or the founder. So the founder of the church is the father. The father founded the church. The father founded the family. So go back to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 18 again. And with the explanation, look at it again. For through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the father. The founder of the church is the father. The son can do nothing of himself. Remember what the father said about Jesus. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He said it to John the Baptist. Then he said it the second time when Elijah and Moses appeared on the Mount of Transfiguration. But the second time he said it, he said, hear ye him. This is my beloved son. Hear ye him because when you hear him, you hear me. You hear me in him. He can do nothing. So whatever you hear him say is what I am saying for the son can do nothing of himself but what he hears or sees the father do. In other words, if you are going to hear me, hear him. He is not a messenger. He is the father manifest. When we have taken time to painstakingly study these things and then we casually say Jesus is God. You hear people say, quote the scripture, show us where in the Bible. <laughs> it's not show us. It's not, it takes hours and years of a humble study and prayer to arrive at truths of scripture. Show us where it is. How can you say Jesus is God? Show us, show us. It's not mouth. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down. It takes it takes humility and investment of quality time to study. So we are not in a showbiz. We are here to study. Somebody says study. We are here to learn. It is not gra gra. Mm -mm. This is beyond entertainment. We are building the eternity of men. It's not a joking matter. It's not sure. You can't meet a doctor on the road and say, you say you, are a, you say you are a gynecologist or you open a woman on the road. Show me. Show me how you work on women. No gynecologist will do that to you. Don't, you are a joker. It takes them hours of going to school to learn how to open a goat before opening a woman. It's not sure or sure. Even medical science, they don't show you on the road. Is it God who will show you on the road? You are a joker. You need to calm down. 
You need to calm down. It takes hours of listening and thinking. Very serious thinking when your head is together. When your head is together. Not when your head is scattered. When your head is scattered, you'll be seeing images. You have to calm down. Somebody say calm down. Tell your neighbor, calm down. So Jesus is the father manifest. He is the father manifest. Look at Ephesians chapter 2 verse 18 again. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the father. Through him. Him who? Jesus. We both have access by one spirit. What is access? That's why he said you are no longer a stranger. You are no longer a foreigner. You are now a native. You are now a native. A fellow citizen of the household of God. You are now a native of the family of God. God is the founder. That's why it's called the household of God. In other words, you don't go through Jesus. You only come once. Once you are in Christ, you don't use Jesus to access the Father. You now access the Father directly. You don't ask Jesus to pray for you. No. We both have access to the Father. You only come once. That's why we are one in Christ. We have access. That access is once. Even in prayer, you don't look for access. You access the Father directly. That access is salvation. The day you were saved was the day you had access. We have come in. We are now in the household. How do we come into the household? In Christ. Who walks in Christ? The Father. You cannot be born by the Son. You are born by the Father. You are born by the Father. But where does the Father walk? He walks in the Son. You are born by the Father. But where does the Father walk? He walks in the Son. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me begin for the purpose of pretext Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 3 how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words verse 4 whereby when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Pay attention now. According to the eternal purpose which he proposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Pay attention. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence. Did you see that? Boldness, access, confidence. Boldness, access, con oh my good. If you preach the gospel without assurance, it's no more the gospel of Christ. Did you see the words for assurance here? Boldness, access with confidence. Assurance. Any gospel that lacks assurance is not the gospel of Christ. All the words in the epistles are filled with so much assurance. 
boldness with access with confidence now put it back boldness access confidence by the faith of him 13 we are for i desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you which is your glory next verse for this cause because of these things because of these realities that we have enumerated from verse 3 down i bow my knees unto the father of our lord jesus christ next verse glory of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named he calls it a family so the church is firstly a family before a gathering the church is firstly a family before it is a gathering many people know of the church of the gathering but are not aware of the church of the family the church is a family is a family that gathers we are firstly a family that's why we are gathered it is a family that gathers the word named I bow my knees under the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That word named, underline, named there means to call. That is, is God who called us family. Named. We are named. We didn't name ourselves. We are named. God himself calls us family. We did not call him. He put the label on us. He put that label on us. Our same father is only a response to what he has called us. When he called us family, we call him father. Our calling God father is responding to him calling us family. He named us. He labeled us. He called us family. Glory to God. He initiates this. We are named by the father. If there's a surname, every member will bear the same surname. He calls us family. We are named by him. You didn't make him your father. He made you his son. Then in response to his making, you call him father. Oh, glory to God. You didn't make him father. He made you his family. Then in response to his making, you now woke up and said, Abba. Abba. You didn't call him Abba until he called you family. When he called you family, what he initiated in you is his spirit. So when his spirit entered you and called you family, when you realize what has happened, you now call him father. All those calling him Jehovah have not yet understood that they are born of God. They have not yet understood who their father is. The New Testament is the revelation of the father and his family. The New Testament is the revelation of the father and his family. Oh, hallelujah. It is his work. Remember, it is his work. I will be to you a father. And you will be to me sons and daughters. So first of all, I will be to you a father first. Then you will be to me sons and daughters. So it is his work. Remember, I will build my church. I, my, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Somebody said to me very loud, I am the father's work. Said very loud, I am the father's work. I am the father's work. Now say with me, I will build my church. Now say with me, I will build my family. That's what the father meant. I am the father's work. So the church, which is the father's family, is the father's building. And he called me family. I call him father. I, your pastor, does not determine who is in the family. I don't determine it. I am also a son in the family. I am not the one that select who comes to the family. It's not my family. I'm a member of his family. 
all of us members of his family. When he gave us the spirit, the spirit of God in us cried a cry. What was that cry? Abba Father! You know the joy that comes on the face of a mother when for the first time her child looks at her and says, Mommy. The spirit of mommy is inside the daughter. All the daughter did was to recognize. It's not the day the daughter said mommy or the son said mommy or daddy that the son was born. The son has been born. But the day the son said mommy was the day the son acknowledged. When you grow in knowledge, when you have acknowledged who you are, the cry that comes out is not Jehovah Nisi, is father. <laughs> father, father is the manifestation of spiritual growth. That's why the spirit of adoption is a cry of fatherhood. Not Nisi, not Jire, not Sid Kenu. You are still far from growth. When you grow into maturity in acknowledging what the Father has done in you, what it provokes out of you naturally is Abba Father. Spirit of adoption. The spirit of his son. The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Abba Father. John 14 verse 2. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Now, you know, we did, we did a lot of explanation. So this is what it is supposed to read. In my father's household, there are many temples. In my father's household, there are many temples. Verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. That is the father's house. Look at verse 6 of that same chapter. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the father, but by me. Notice, he put and before life and before life i am the way the truth and the life there are not three things what he's simply saying is the way is the truth and the way the truth is the life the way the truth is the life I am the way, the truth, that is the life. That is the life. Jesus is not talking about three elements. He is talking about the life. So when he says, no man cometh to the Father but by me, the word come is used also for worship or to stand before. No man stands before. No man worships the Father but by me. But by me. So he explains what he meant. When Philip said, show us the Father. Show us the Father. Then he said, he that has seen me has seen the Father. He that has seen me had seen the Father. Then Jesus now said to Philip, how then sayest thou, show us the Father? There is no father elsewhere. He that has seen me, I am the father manifest. I am the father revealed. I am the father in manifestation. I am the father in the physical. I am the father in tangibility. If you are not satisfied with me, then you will never see anything else. I am the physical appearance of the Father. I am the Father explaining himself. Hmm. I am the Father unveiling himself. I am the exclusive carrier of the Father. I am the 
absolute, exact, precise, comprehensive, total revelation of the Father. I am the exactness of the Father. I am the express image of the Father. I am the only one officially permitted to declare the Father. I am the Father manifest. That's Jesus talking. He that has seen me has seen the Father. No distance. I am the truth about the Father. And I am the Father's life. I am the Father's life. I am the way, the truth, that is the life. I am the life of the Father. I am the truth concerning the Father. I am the access to the Father. The access. So to see me, to see me, Jesus means, to see Jesus is to be with the Father. John chapter 14 verse 9. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet has thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father, and how sayest thou then? Show us the Father. Verse 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. He doeth the works. The Father which dwelleth in me. Jesus is the Father's dwelling. Verse 12 of John 14. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater than this, shall he do, because I go to the Father. Verse 13. And whatsoever I shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Verse 2 of that chapter 14. In my Father's house, on the line, on the line, in my father's house in verse 2 verse 6 no man cometh unto the father on the line verse 7 and from henceforth you know him and have seen him on the line and have seen him you have seen the father look at verse 9 jesus said unto them have i been so long time with you and yet has that known me philip on the line, he that has seen me has seen the Father. He that has seen me has seen the Father. Verse 11. Believe me that I in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. Question, where is the Father? Huh? in Christ the father is in Christ verse 12 Halabadoga. verily verily I say unto you he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also and greater than this shall he do why because I go unto my father how do you go to the father John 14 14 if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do. Now, underline, I will do, please, underline, because I want to take you back and I want to grab your attention to something. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do. Go back to verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater than this shall he do, because I go unto my father. 13. And whatsoever I shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the father may be glorified in the son. Go back to verse 11. Believe me, that I in the father, and the father in me, or else, Believe me for the very work's sake. Give me verse 10. Now pay close attention to where I'm going. 
Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. The Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. <laughs> Take note, verse 14. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do. The Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do. Why? I am the Father. Did you follow the way I calculated it? Because the scriptures explain themselves. They are explaining themselves. Jesus is taking time because he's communicating to a people that are not born again. So he's breaking it in, in faces to arrive at what he's communicating. He first said, the father that dwelleth in me do the works. Then he now say anything you ask, I will do. Meaning I am the father doing the works. Glory to God. So he keeps emphasizing the work of the father. Look at verse 16 of the same chapter. And I will pray the father. He shall give you another comforter. That he may abide with you for how long? Forever. Look at verse 20 now. And at that day, glory to God. You shall know that I in my father. And ye in me. And I in you. Glory to God. I in my father and ye in me and I in you. You shall know. Do you now know? In that day, talking of today, you shall know. Verse 21. He that had my commandments. Question, is it ten commandments? What is the word commandments? He that believes. In the New Testament, commandment means to believe in what Jesus has done. The command is faith in Christ. So, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Faith in Christ brings the revelation of Jesus to the believer. I will manifest myself to him. I will manifest myself to him. Believe. Verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, hallelujah, he will keep my words, and my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. We will come to him and make him our residence. Faith in Christ makes the believer God's residential address. We will come to him and make our abode. Give me the next verse. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's. Jesus kept emphasizing that this is all the Father's work. This is all the Father's work. This is not your effort. This is not your struggle. This is not you trying and trying not. This is all the Father's work. The Father's work. The family is the Father's work. That is the emphasis Jesus is making in this place. Give me the next verse. Glory to God. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. Next verse. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father, the Father's work, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. 27. Peace I live with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. 28. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you loved me, you will rejoice. Because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. 
All right? Next verse, 29. And now I have told you before it comes to pass that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Next verse. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. Next verse. But that the world may know that I love the Father. And as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hands. So he emphasizes the Father. So don't discharge what he's saying yet. Just keep what you have read. So the family, again, is whose work? Father's work. John 15, 1 now. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Husband man is not someone who has a wife. That's not the meaning of husband man. It is a Greek word, girl goes. Used 19 times for a farmer. Farmer. Husband man. Farmer. Why did Jesus call the father husband man? Because of everything he said in chapter 14 where we read. That it is the father's work. The family is the father's work. Alright. So it's about the father. So he now says I am the vine. It's not my work. It's the father's work. He is the husband man. I am the vine. Now let's go to where the husband man is described in the Bible for proper exegesis. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 6. The husband man that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruit. The husband man that laboreth. So by using husband man, who does the work? The father. The father does the work. That is the entire farmland is the father's work. The entire farmland is the father's work. So, it is the father that labors. It is the father that labors. Which means, the father is the first partaker of what he does. Because what he does will be the reward of his work. The reward of his work. Go to James 5, 7. Let's look at that same word, husband man. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold... The husband man waited for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it until he received the early and the latter rain. So one of the traits of the husband man is patience. He desires to see fruit of his work because if there's no fruit in his work, he failed. If the husband man has work and the work does not have fruit, the husband man who did the work has failed. You didn't hear that. Please hear that very well. If the husband man worked in the farm and after working, the farm does not produce fruit for the husband man. The husband man has failed. Is it the farm that failed or the husband man? Talk to me power citizens. Is it the farm that failed or the husband man? Who worked on the farm? Who should have fruit from the farm? If the farm produced fruit, who succeeded? So it is his work. It is his work. It is his work. It is his work. John 15, 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Next verse. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. This is where the legalists who do not humble themselves to study will now say you can lose salvation. That if you don't bear fruit, the father will chop you out. Question, who is the laborer in the farm? Husband, use the language now. Who is the laborer in the farm? Who owns the farm? Who labored in the farm? If the farm produced fruit, who succeeded? If the farm did not produce fruit, who failed? So every branch in me that beareth not fruit, that means it is the husband man that has the problem, not the branch. If you follow the analogy properly, he take it away there is a bad English. That he take it away. In the Greek is he lifts up. He lifts up. If the branch is failing to produce, he lifts the branch up to enable the branch produce. 
Not that he cut off. That word take it away means he lifts up. Because if the branch is not bearing fruit, it is your husband man's work. So he is not telling you that part of his work will not function well. What he's saying is if any part of his work is having an issue with producing result, he the husband man will look at that part and lift it up and help it produce. Because the branch is the work of the husband man. He lifts up and every branch that bears fruit, he, 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 because it is his work, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. The one that does not produce, he will lift up. The one that produces, he will purge because all of them are his work. The husband man owns the farmland. Now, you are clean through the word which i have spoken unto you you are what you are clean so question verse 2 where we read every branch in me that bear no fruit you take it away and every branch that bear fruit you project that it may bear more fruit you know what is dealing with in verse 2 spiritual growth not salvation verse 2 is not salvation you are already in the vine you are already inside you are already saved so fruitfulness is spiritual growth. He's saying that if you are in him and you are not producing fruit, he will lift up. That is, he will create circumstances and bring you around a teaching pastor like Abel Damina to teach you so you can produce fruit. It's his work. That's why he brought you to Power City. That's why he brought you here. That's why he hooked you up to Facebook. That's why he created YouTube. That's why he created television. He walked, he is walking. And you're not the only one. There are millions out there. He's still walking because he's a husband man. He's connecting them. He's connecting them so that they can grow. Enough of playing church. Enough of playing church. Enough of it. It's time for believers to start producing fruit. And if you observe very carefully, those of you that are very observant, there is an awakening going all over the world. People are suddenly becoming aware that there's more to Christ than playing church. And people are hungry and seeking for true teachers, true pastors to teach them the gospel. People are waking up to truth. Now, you, a pastor cannot just say something now and go free with it. People will cross-examine it. People will check it. People, because spiritual growth is happening in the body of Christ. There's a purging going on. The branches that are not producing fruit, he's lifting them up. In a family, the nurturing of the family is the responsibility of children. Hey, talk to me. The nurturing of the family is the responsibility of the children. Is it the children that determine what their mother should cook? There are some foods your mother cook you don't like. She will beat you to eat it. Because she knows what she put inside and it's good for your health, true or false. And then after you eat it, you'll be shining your 32. Because now the food is working inside your body. It is the parent's responsibility to prepare nourishing food. It may not taste nice, but it is good for their health. That's why sometimes I'm teaching you keep your face like that, like bitter leaf. I still push it. I'm not moved. Because... It is my responsibility to bring the food that the father has prepared for the family to eat. I am the chef of this house. Whether the food look nice for you or not, it is good for your health. Every food must not look nice. Amen. And when you start eating it, then you discover it's not as it looked. Then suddenly you're smiling. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. More. That's right. Glory. The thing is entering now. Glory to God. It's a job of the husband man to nurture his family. It's a job of God to nurture you. You are his work. God does not give birth and dump. He doesn't dump his children. He nurtures them. He is a responsible father. He said the one that does not bear fruit, he will lift up. Relax, friends. It's a family. We are not in a competition. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Tell your neighbor we are not in a competition. Verse 4. Abide in me and I in you. 
as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can you except you abide in me the word abide is the same word for meno why is he saying abide in me to them he cannot say that to you today because you're already in him he said it to them because they were not yet in him he was speaking to them of a reality that his resurrection will bring to his family so because he was still talking to people that were not born again he told them to abide we that are born again we are in him hallelujah i said hallelujah somebody shout i am in him justified he is in me glorified i didn't hear a powerful amen john 14 12 Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, that's how to abide in him. How do I abide in Jesus? He that believeth on me, the work that I do shall he do also. And greater than this shall he do because I go unto my father. When you believe the gospel, that day you start abiding in Jesus. You abide in him once because you believe once. So that John chapter 15 from verse 1 to 5 is evangelistic message to get people born again. It's not for people that are already born again. Because people that are already born again are already abiding in him. We are in him. We live in him. We are his household. We are the father's family. Is somebody excited here? Say with me, God is my father. I am his family. Say I'm a native of the family of God. Stand on your feet. That's all I've got for you in this service. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Glory to God. Shout it very loud. I am in the Father's family. God is my Father. I belong to the family of God. I am no more a stranger. I'm not a foreigner. I am a native of the Father's family. Say very loud with me. New creation. New spirit new tongues say in the family we have our language zambo roto meleke nengra nango roto soka ladabaha enge bozo to ladabambra nakala na mangele de bosha enge boroko to sekele ne mangala nama honey can't you see what god is doing he not only made you his family he not only made you his family he gave you his language he that speaketh in tongues speaketh not unto men, but unto God, the Father's family. This sign shall follow those that believe in my name. They shall speak with new tongues. Amen. I said amen. amen. We have the language of our father. And we speak mysteries. We speak mysteries. Born of God. Born of God. Where he is I am. What he has I have. And what he can do I can do. What is not in him is not in me. Amen. amen. Say with me very loud. I am in Christ. Rooted. Grounded. Established. In Christ. Now say very loud. What is not in Christ is not allowed in my environment in the name of jesus no access to anything that is antichrist around my life i am secured complete kept preserved in christ jesus i didn't hear a powerful amen Lift your right hands to heaven. Father, I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice in this building and those watching online and those around the world. I ask that this revelation of the father and his family grows big on our inside until nothing else matters. In the name of Jesus. Revelation knowledge continues to grow in this house. Veils continue to fall off. Your people equipped, edified, built up. Jesus made manifest through every one of us. And I take authority over sickness and disease. Every yoke of the enemy and everything that is contrary to what redemption has provided. We resist you in the name of Jesus. We resist you now in the name of Jesus. Sick bodies be healed. Be healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus. 
and I declare you blessed I declare you empowered I declare you built up I declare you edified and I declare you totally energized strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man you are strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man you are strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man Engebo shatola da babaya reko sapele ne manu negerita kalanima nangrendo se kila namaha wherever you need a miracle receive miracles now receive it in the name of Jesus thank you father thank you father thank you father testimonies unrestricted testimonies unrestricted testimonies unrestricted Zikola Batanaga. Praise you, Father. It is done. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of finality. Go ahead and give Jesus a celebration in this building. Is that how you celebrate your family status? Is that how you celebrate your family status? Glory! Sell me very loud. I am God's work. I am the father's family. Shout amen to that. You are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your spirit and in your body, which are God. So your spirit and your body is sealed until the day when mortality puts on immortality. Sin cannot break the seal. Individual mistakes cannot break the seal. Persecution cannot break the seal. Nakedness cannot break the seal. Hunger cannot break the seal. Famine cannot break the seal. I am fully persuaded that nothing in this life, nor in the life to come, shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ. Where are you in Christ? What keeps you there? The love of God. Join Drs. Abel and Rachel Daminer in New Christian Camp Meeting 2021 and Ask the Counselor with Michael Bush. Theme in Christ Realities. Ministering Dr. Abel Daminer. Date 31st January to 14th February 2021. Time Mondays to Saturdays 6 p.m. daily on Inspiration FM 105.9 Uyo, Comfort FM 95.1 Uyo, Excel FM 106.9 Uyo, Radio Aquaibo 90.5 Uyo, Unio FM 100.7 Uyo, and Heritage FM 104.9 and also live on Sundays 7.30 a.m. first service and 10.30 a.m. second service Venue, Power City International number 98 Wangibo Road Uyo, Akwaibom State Nigeria. You can also watch this program live on Kingdom Live Network TV on your strong decoder or my TV decoder. You can also follow Abel Damino's Facebook page, Public Figure, as well as YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram handles to watch real time. Host Doctors Abel and Rachel Damino. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Oh my goodness, what a service, what a word. I believe you've been impacted, affected with the word of his grace. Listen very carefully. It is God's intent for you to continue walking in this light. So I'm going to encourage you to keep following. Remember, every day, we're live right here on Facebook and YouTube every day. 12 noon GMT plus 1, 10 p.m. GMT plus 1. And in this season where we're in the midst of a program, Riot Live, and ask the counselor, you can also be a part of the meetings every evening, 6 p.m. GMT plus one. Now, listen carefully. If you're in an area around the world where you're following these teachings and there is no Christ-centered church where you can attend church, two things are very important. Number one, God doesn't want you to be in isolation. The Bible says God sets the solitary in families. You need to belong to a local church, a local fellowship, where you're able to learn with other brethren and beyond learning, where you're able to serve the brethren with the grace of God and the gift of God upon your life. You know, the word of God teaches us against selfishness. When you begin to stay by yourself, you're being selfish. 
you are denying other brethren the grace of God upon your life. So I want to encourage you to ensure that you are a part of a Christ-centered fellowship. And if there's none in your area, send me a mail today, Dr. Abel Damina. Tell me where you are. If you want to host or you want to be the coordinator of the campus, we will train you, equip you, and help you start one in your country, in your community, so you become a lighthouse to the darkness in your community. Very, very important. I'm expecting to hear from you today. And if there is a Christ-centered church, it's good for you to belong there and make a difference. If there's none, we expect to hear from you. Remember also to order for our teaching materials, both the books and the audio teachings, so that you can equip yourself and establish yourself in the light of Christ Jesus. It's such a joy to be able to serve you the grace of God. My prayer for you is that the eyes of your understanding be flooded with light, that the reality of Christ will resonate in your mind. We rebuke sickness, disease, oppression. We come against whatever is not planted by God in your heart today. We command it rooted out. And Father, we thank you for miracles, healings, and testimonies. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen to your victory station. Station.